Welcome back guys. Last time we put the first beam in, the one that went on the bulkhead. Um, today we're going to be putting two more beams forward of the bulkhead beam. What we need to do first is figure out the levels, so figure out the height that the beams have to go, because they all have to be perfectly, perfectly in line, don't they? So the best way I can come up with to set the levels is the actual heights of the beams going aft, which are actually all perfectly aligned with a straight edge. So if we can transfer that and get a line forward, then we should have somewhere to aim at then, shouldn't we? So then we'll know where the beams have to go. Well, we'll figure that out. Okay, so we've been calculating where our vanishing point is going to be on the stem. So between all of these beams, so we need to figure out where it's going to be going. It's taken a very long time. So we've basically been using our string line and then figuring out where it lands on each beam. So we're going from that beam to that beam. So that's how we found the end of this one. And then basically exactly the same on this side. So we've gone all the way down, then it's followed the beams across, and then we found. So this line here is our, the top of our beams. So what we need to do now is set these beams in to the level, then they all run parallel with the string lines and the sensors, and it should be fine, we think. Okay, so the plan is now is to get two more beams in. Right, so we've divided the beams up now. So between the between this beam and the breast hook, because that's we're counting that as a beam, so that's gonna be a structural part. So we want to put the beams in the middle. If we're looking back at a video and they are basically we could tell where where they landed depending on where the frames were. Wasn't quite matching this side, so we, we, we've we've now evened it all up so all the beams are actually perfectly perfectly in line. So we just mark one, and now we've got to mark the other one now. So this first one then from here to there is three eight six. Okay, so go more towards the okay. Okay. Got it. So that's where that one lands. Okay, so it's quite complicated this. I can't can't quite get my head around it just yet, but I'm sure it'll come right in the end. But what we're gonna do is just start sneaking up on it. We're gonna start removing bits of material to get it to at least land on here and then we know that we need to still come down lower but what we don't want to do is cut too much off and goes too low so let's sneak up on it shall we we'll cut it that for now So we're now resting on the beam at least. We're, we're slightly forward here because of like this back end there. Um, but so we need to cut more of that side to get that back to get a good mark yeah. on it. As you can see, we don't actually need to go down that much more. So that's the land on that beam. Which right. is interesting. Keep working on it then. So what I'm thinking now is that we mark either side of the beam to get our width. We then actually take some off the top of the beam shelf, like a flat surface now, because that's how the original one was. We had to look on the, back on the video. Um, and then that'll bring us down, give us a nice flat piece to land on, then that'll be cool. I think I'm a Gemma filming that. He's using my left hand and I was like a... <laughs> <laughs> Not long get left hands. There it is. So now eyeballing down this line here to basically get the angles. So I was just saying to Gemma off camera, I think the reason why we're going to notch out the top of the beam shelf is the amount of loading that goes on around here with the anchor windlass. So in the anchor windlass, he's trying to pull into it, so he's trying to pull this way, maybe. So that's going to try and pull the whole deck this way. So you want to, I don't know what the joint's called, I'm going to call it a dovetail, but it's not. So that's going to be locked into the deck, and then it can't come, can't move forward and aft then, basically, can it? How are you getting on? I'm 
loving them. Absolutely loving them. Sand them. Sand your boat again. <laughs> That's what they get to do later, then. <gasps> Paint <Paint> your boat. <laughs> so, back at the boat again today. Once again, stuck in the mud. At least it's quite hard, this bit. Simon and Gemma get to stay in a really nice and dry up on the boat, and they've kicked me down here to fill in all these little holes, finish the sanding that we did last time, get that all nice and smooth, all the little holes filled in, any loose bits of wood taken out. So that's my job for the day. Again, been sanding my favorite thing gonna be doing some more painting in a bit so we've just got all of this now nice and smooth along here size making loads of noise in the background so we're just going to start filling it but this isn't for the final beautiful look for it this is just protection for the winter on the new wood we're sanding along down there it's just going to give that a coat of paint as we go along and then um yeah hopefully it'll be protected for the winter and we'll see how long it lasts Just an odd aside here, for those of you who are on the Facebook group, there's been some pictures put up recently from someone who saw the boat when it was recently arrived at um, Heswall. It looked a hell of a lot better than it does now, but it just goes to show that you can't hide rot. Because if you look at her now, compared to what she looked like when she got here, she looks much worse. But as you've seen from all the videos over the years, there's so much strength been built into her. So, beauty does cover a multitude of sins. And if you're not on the Facebook group, why aren't you? So we've been for a brew, giving our filler time to set off. Never any good at icing cakes, as you can tell. So, going to give it a sand down now and see how much you've got left to fill afterwards to tidy it all back up again. This is how we used to do it in the olden days. Is it? Yeah. <laughs> multi tool. <laughs> you keep finding them along the shoreline of the Thames, don't you? Yeah, yeah. you keep digging them up. So, this is now our final cut. Just sort of. Yeah. <laughs> what was I said off off camera? It didn't need to come down as much as it needed to. So we measured ten mil at the string line earlier. That's how much it was saying to remove. But I said I bet it's double that, and it's not still. See? Yeah. So yeah, we took ten mil down. Yeah. And it still needs to come down. Yeah. More. Gemma went, that doesn't make sense. So it doesn't make sense to me, but in my little brain, it's telling me I need to take more off it. <laughs> right, keep nibbling away. We're getting there. This this one needs to come down ever so slightly. 
Our vanishing line goes to there. When this one comes down, then it'll be um bang on. Get in there. I want to stand on them. Oh, don't, because it's a long way down, do you? <laughs> yeah, but it's like sort of strength test. <laughs> Do they bend much? No. Okay. That's good. Because even if they did, when it's got all the deck on it and stuff, it's going to share it between all the other ones. Yeah, but we've also still got the longitudinal bits to put in it as well, yes. haven't we? Yeah. Okay, we're getting there. Keep just working at it and bringing them down. Yeah, we're like millimetres now. Yeah, like it's like, it's like a couple of mil. You can't cock up now. No. Getting there. Middle's very close now. We've got a tiny, tiny bit on here. So I'm going to relieve it ever so slightly there. And then. And this one's good, it doesn't roll. So basically, just using pieces of wood, aren't we, to see if they're all yeah. in line? And if it rolls on yeah. one, you know, we've got a high. We know our target. We're probably potentially slightly low on our target, but I'm leaning against one air, and that that changes it. So it's all it's all very dynamic. And I'm saying to Gemma, like we're going for we're like we're within a couple of millimeters now. As soon as we float, this is going to change, and it? <laughs> it's like. <laughs> I'm not sure people are using using the grinder to do it. I'll get struck off. <laughs> You're no woodworker. <laughs> you don't use a grinder to uh, chisel out your wood. Get struck off from um There we go. So that's it. That's it now. They are now ready to paint. Well, I can paint I think something. What we need to do now is figure out how we fit them. Because I don't think they were fitted really. Because did you remember they just come off, didn't they? Yeah, they did. So how do we make these secure now to the boat? Okay, well what we could do is, like, say here, put the packer back in. Okay. And then from the outside, you could go through the hull, through the packer, and through the ends of the beam. What do you think about that one? It's not ideal going into the end grain, is it? But... No. I think what would be nice to see in here is some knees, because there wasn't any knees in here either. No. You know what I call the knees? Yeah. So it'd be nice to actually make some knees. But if you're going to put knees in, we need to put some web frames in, because there's no web frames. Not necessarily web frames, but what we could do is put like... We could even put like some packer sort of material in. Yeah. If there to there. So then you've got something to fix to, or...? No, no, it's too complicated. Okay. The stress is involved with there, so basically fore and aft down there because 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 of the windlass. Basically, the, the whole pants in side to side, so we need we, we need to keep it from going side to side. How much uplift is there? Not a lot really, but we obviously we don't want to blow off in the wind, do we? <laughs> don't think it'll blow off in the wind. I think so, if it does, we should stop working yeah, on boats. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> for a bit of windy day that. So yeah, we need to stop it moving side to side, don't we? So we could have a go. Hmm, here's an idea. Some big fixings all the way through. Just have to shoot that way, won't it? Or, because obviously we haven't got any knees here, or put knees in. I think knees will be complicated, and that's why they've not done it. So we've got threaded bar, maybe, yeah. and countersink sort yeah, of the yeah, hole yeah. where the nut will sit, so it's obviously then still flush yeah. with your deck. That's not out of the, out the, out the equation, there, is it? No. Nope. Right. Let's have a think. Let's have a think. Work out exactly how we're fitting these. Yeah. Get in there, though. Three beams. Yay! Right, so they're all in now. They're all lined up perfectly. And I've figured out how we're going to fix them. Gemma said I can I can choose this one. <laughs> no, we're joking, right? So the best way I can, the best solution I can see in me in my head is basically if we stand right on the edge of the boat here, and then we shoot a bolt all the way through, 
So we're through the beam here, and we're all the way through and come out down there. Then we can basically nut and bolt that together with some M10 A4 stainless steel. And it's going to go nowhere then, isn't it? It's going to keep it from going side to side, up and down, and fore and aft. That's the best solution we can think of. So we'll drill all them now, and then we can then take them back off, paint them, and then we can then bomb them in. Do you want to tell everyone about your little um, accident? Not really. I'll get judged. <laughs> now, I was, I was basically cutting the angles on the end on the end of these to match the packers. Because um, you're working on angles, you're working in a, in a triangle-shaped thing. Balancing down there um, while you're cutting. Yeah, I kind of slipped with the, um, the saw. So they got snagged and then ripped me back and then I've, I've, I've marked that. No man. But well, I think I'll fix it. Yeah, it needs fixing. But we're going to be having a we're going to be cutting a middle piece into it, which oh actually well, no, it's not actually in the oh, middle. Oh no, it's not because the middle's off. there. Yeah, but what I'm tempted to do is a bit of an update from the original. Anyway, I might go wider here on the middle piece because it's got the where the windlass goes. So I didn't notice where the windlass goes on the other one, yeah, and it wasn't quite big enough. So if we have a maybe go big piece. And all the windlass and all that sort of stuff will have a bit more substance to it. So this is for like the longitudinal yes. bits that we're talking about. Middle piece, here. yeah, yeah. And obviously we're gonna have two pieces, we're gonna have ply, so they've got to have two joining pieces in the middle, so we'll, we'll, we might bulk that off a bit. Okay. So so you wanna pre-drill all the ends before I go and paint the beams, don't you? Yeah, so that's what we're doing now. Up, so I can take these away now and paint them, can't I? I guess so, yeah. They look a bit um, boring now, the grey, don't they? I know, yeah. <laughs> boring grey now, but... Battleship grey? Yeah. So they've only had one, one coat of prime up to now. Um, we were going to put another one on today, but we want to handle them. But we can actually get to them now, can't we? And give them a good paint when they're in position. So I think what we need to do now is actually stick the, some bonding material on it and get them bolted up. How are we doing now? I'm fitting the very first deck beam that is getting secured in. So what we're going to do is we're going to get some glue. So I'm not allowed to do this because apparently I use too much. Is this what's going to hold it in? Or? No, we've got bolts as well. So I've removed Gemma's lovely paint off the bottom, so it sticks better. It's quite a beautiful day, the tide's coming in very, very slowly. Look at it, it's like a pond. Washers? Yep, yeah, need some washers. So now, in theory, <laughs> got to try and find the hole. Yeah. Welcome to my world. <laughs> Do you want a hammer? Hold on, let me have a feel first. I should point out, I think I'm doing a rubbish job of being a camera person. Oh, yeah. But. I'll just point out that your washers don't go in. We'll put the washer in first because it's on the angle. That's better. See, top tips. Alright, just hit it. No, because I don't know whether I'm even in the hole. Mm. Yes, there we go. Look yeah, that one. Oh, why did I grab the ends of the bolt? Well, they're a bit big, bit big than bolts, aren't There's a hammer there. Well, I was not going to clean me up. 
Natasha first. Oh, I'm doing a rubbish job. See, hammers fix everything. I think your bolts were definitely long enough. I think they're a bit, a bit excessive. So it's only 100 quid a, a metre, isn't it, that stuff? <laughs> cool. So before we screw that one up, should we put the next one in and we'll make sure they're all level? That's a good idea. Look at that, that's beautiful. Look at the countersunk um, thingy holes on the right angle. All the oozage. All the squeezage. <laughs> <laughs> so I think what we're going to do, uh, obviously with these holes, these are water traps and we don't want water sitting in the hole and rotting the beam end. So we're going to fill them with thickened epoxy. So we're going to encapsulate the nuts because we should never really have to take them back out, hopefully. Do you know what a proper, like, Shipwright would do, they'd machine some like round bungs, wouldn't they, and put them in and do it in. But we're, we're, we're shipwrights, though. We're not, we're shit at ship, shipwrights. <laughs> <laughs> right, I'll get the other one in and then we're done. Right, so all tightened down now. I was a bit concerned when we tightened the bolts that they were going to change shape, but this is level. This one's level, ever so. And this one's bang on. So I think we did a good job. Okay, so now we just need to fix this Ooh, one. Yeah. So we can't use the same bolt method for this one. So we're going to use copper nails. There it goes, yeah. Just clean up my lubrication. <laughs> cool, so that's now fixed through the beam and into the beam shelf, and we'll stick one more in. Side on, yeah. So it's extra secure. Yeah, because when you've got two going that way, well, one going that way, one going that way, it can't come out then, can it? First three beams. Mm. I think we need a stand test. Need a stand test. <laughs> it does actually feel really solid. Obviously with all the decks on it. I oh, know you can even stand on this bit. Do you remember this breast tuck we made? Then you can go. Do you know and when you're returning from your Titanic pose like up here? Oh, I think we need to do a Titanic pose. <laughs> <laughs> Should we get the drone out? Go on then. Carry emotions with the weight of the ocean. You keep climbing mountains, too blind to see. It's not getting you closer to where you wanna be. Your life, the weight on your shoulders, time to put it down. You fall and you break, you got battles to take them, but you figure it out, yeah. You fall and you break, you got changes to make now. See the light at the end of the tunnel. It's right there, now just look up and follow. Take one step at a time, babe, I'm with you. Okay, right, so what we need to do now is figure out the height of the deck. So we know the ends of these beams are basically going to 
point to the end of the deck, aren't they? But we need to know where it is in the middle. So what I think we should do is we put that across there, we know where that is, and then we'll maybe drill a hole underneath it following the line of this piece of oak. Then that'll point out and that'll give us our measurement down, our outside. Then we can then come along with the saw and hopefully cut it all off nicely. So that's the plan. Cut your boat off time. Yeah, get rid of all this, buddy. It's like a castle, isn't it? It's all like bows and arrows and get it all smooth. This is, I think this is probably one of the most nerve wracking things because if we get it wrong, uh, we can't just glue bits back on. Yeah, <laughs> Well, we've done this, we've done this, we've done this, we've done... We're not, we're not, we don't, we're not twitchy at all. Oh, well, hang on. At the end of the day, it doesn't really matter. Because the ball has gone on the outside. Even if it is lower somewhere, it doesn't really matter. The deck's going over that. The deck gives you your, your smooth line, doesn't it? Obviously, if it's 100mm out, then we've got a problem, but... Okay, right. so if we work out the height, we need to cut the planks back for the height of the deck. So that line now tells us the very top of the hole yep. is That should be 125 mil now. Should be. Should be 125 mil off <laughs> the outside plank. Yes. Go on. Let me uh, try and pull it so everybody at home playing along can see. Oh, we've got a piece of bat on the outside of here. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> no. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Nearly. <laughs> right, let's put the lock on it. There you go, it's got a lock now. Don't drop the tape measure. Oh, it did get wet, look, it oh. did get wet. That's what clothes are for. Where's me all? I can't even see. It's not it's 125 mil, is it? 135 mil. What's going wrong on the camera? When the camera comes out, it goes. We've just so, done that side. Just explain where this 125 mil measurements come from. That's the average measurement that they cut back to around the whole boat. So that's the difference between the outer plank height and yeah. the inner plank height. Yes. But it's never been sort of bang on, has it? Well, it's... maybe we go back a little bit and actually see because we we always done our measurements from the other side. Well, just, just do as soon as you can there. Yeah. So you can see the actual original height of the frames. So that's oh, yeah. quite good, isn't it? Well, these were the ones that were cut. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. So it's like bang on. So what we need to do now is get loads of their holes, reference holes, yep. from the inside, because mm. then we need to go and cut from the outside, don't we? Yes. Right, so here's the holes we drilled through, which we know parallel with the beams. So we've marked the top of the holes. So we've got one there, one there, one there, and there's a few down there. So here's the top set of planks. But if you look at the top set of planks, you can see how irregular they are. So they weren't actually cut that good. For some reason in my head, it was, this was the 40s work, but it wasn't, it was the 80s work, wasn't it? Um, so the bulwarks are gonna go on this part here but what's going to come up, and then they basically originally had a big sort of finishing trim all the way around the outside to make it look beautiful. So if this outer plank is irregular, it didn't actually matter whatsoever because it gave them some scope to go up and down with the bulwarks, and also it was covered by a big, a big sort of big plate, wasn't it? Anyway, right. So what we're going to do now is we're going to screw a batten now to the hull um, because I've now measured down our saw cut depth was 111 millimetres and so there's our line there so what we need to do now is put a batten on along here following all the way down there um, and then we can hopefully run our saw down it and then what we're going to do we're going to put the saw through and then we're going to work out the angle even though the angle changes throughout the boat so what we need to do is keep it steeper and then we can then plane back to the outside mark Okay. And it's actually quite hard because, because the boat curves and it technically wants to stay on the straight line because we're, we're working on that angle there, the boat curves that way 
but I don't know if you can see this because of the sun, but if you look at the side of the bow now, it, it looks right from here. It looks, if anything, it dips down ever so slightly right forward. But I've looked at old pictures as well, and it looks like it did that, but I think it's just, it's just the way... Because obviously if you look higher, it looks right, and if you look low, it looks right. But I think what we need to do is have faith in our measurements. I wish it had gone up a tiny bit higher. Hmm. Alright, let's put the saw through it and we'll, we'll see, see where it, see where it um, kicks us out. It's only going to be millimetres. Right, let's do, do, yeah, be, 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 be. Right, let's go do some photos before we cut it. Well, you did put them on Facebook. Yeah. Yeah. So I think everyone should come over and join our Facebook group. Even I'm on the Facebook group. <laughs> and I'm old. <laughs> right, so we're going to go for it. See what happens. The problem is going to use this saw on this stupid thing. So if I've got a form, I'll let go of the saw. Right, where, where's, where's, where's two beams? Can you point to the beams? Right, so if I start here then, if I introduce myself yeah, there. Yeah, so you've got two frames. There's nothing to balance. Packers. Them. Right, the first set of problems, this just falls straight down through the things. Right, so we just aborted that cut because basically this falls down through my piece of wood. So I've got nothing to use the guide anyway. So I think if we just draw our known holes here, if we just draw lines between them, then we're going to do by eye cut. Oh, it's planing down anyway, so no matter. So you're going freehand? Yeah, freehand on a wobbly ladder. What am I doing here? Yeah. Can't see. I can't remember where you're holding the wood in a minute. Right, Gemma drew 90% of the line, so if it's wrong, well... Don't blame me! Send your emails in. <laughs> right, so there's our line now. I'm going to cut that off. I'm going to go just above the line. <laughs> yeah, give us something to... We can, we can plane down, we can't plane up. Like little bits, isn't it? Then you've got to keep moving your ladder. Okay. So I didn't, I didn't, we're not deep enough to get through that then, are we? No. So I could do with being, couldn't I? And then in a minute we've got to drop off the, du the double, so. So just, just, no, one, 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 one. just to confirm what I was saying, is once, once that's playing down to level, so in a sense it should touch the outside. Yeah, well you can see how high you are from the drill holes yeah. that you've gone through, so we have got to come down yeah, to the exactly. top of yeah, that drill yeah. hole, so we've got... So we've got a bit of scope, haven't we? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> These are the safest working conditions ever, aren't they? Yeah. Jumping round on a ladder. Got no guard. <laughs> um. Can you see your line that way though? Yeah. Planing's going really well. 
But because at the front the circular saw didn't cut all the way through all of the thickness, it's going to take quite a lot of planing to plane back all that. So let's get out the recip saw. One pass, that was quite good. What I like about this actually, I'm not big enough right of it at all, but you can redirect which way you want the. Um... Oh, so it can be a left handed person or a right handed person yeah. playing? It won't go, watch this. When the crab goes that way, when you do that. <laughs> So if Gemma's working next to you, you can fire it into her. Right, so I think that was probably one of the most dodgiest things I've ever done, but it's better than working off a ladder, it's, it's even a tiny bit more safe. Right, so I've just cut along the line there, so what we need to do now, we bring you back a bit more. With that pesky little thing there, can you see him? Little drone. Wave to the drone. <laughs> <laughs> Technology these days is amazing, isn't it? Shame the camera quality isn't as good, or well, isn't that good on the drone, but it's awesome. Right, go away, annoying wasp. Right, so they're all cut now, quite nicely. Still need to come down a tiny, tiny bit, but we basically what we need to do soon is put some packers between there to because the original had it. Obviously, it stops the beams doing that. I don't know. We're basically going back to the original, isn't it? So that's all cut now, nicely to the height of there. Once all these are in, then we've got to do some more planing. So that's why I've not gone all the way down. So I'm going to get my big sander and sand all these perfectly flat, and then we're basically going to soak epoxy into all the end grains. Okay, that's that bit done. But what we need now is we need to make this up because this originally had packers on the top to basically carry the deck. But what? What we need to do now is make this up, but also with a curve in it. So how are we going to do that, how you ask? I don't know. I think the original literally had three blocks yeah. of wood on top, yeah. didn't it? Mm. A different height, so yeah. it doesn't need to be one solid piece. So maybe if we if we screw some things on, but something to, to bear in mind what actually goes here, I will show you. It would be the wrong way around, wouldn't it? Can you tell what it is yet? <laughs> <laughs> so, this sits up higher on top of the deck. This is, do you all know what this is? It's a bar roller. It's a bar roller. So, not only do we have a hose pipe where our primary anchor goes, we can have two more anchors, which I think is pretty cool. So before we can get a deck on, we've got to build up the breast hook, yep. do the packers at the side, and then we can get the first bit of deck on. Yeah. So Hopefully look, before the winter. Yeah. So look, look at this now. We could do it coming slightly further back with our packers, so we can we can get the bolt straight through it. That's what I was trying to. Does that make sense? Yeah. Because obviously that's going to sit, it's going to be a bit higher than this, obviously. And it's going to sit against there. We're going to have to like 
Yeah, I don't know. Does anybody know anybody who does any um, galvanising and chrome plating? Because obviously our Wilness needs chrome plating. This will need galvanising. Um, I don't know, you might do it as a job, but not We achieved quite a lot there today. It's, uh, it's so nice when the weather cooperates with mm. us and the wind and mm. we can get, get stuck in. Yeah. So thank you so much well, to Robbo for painting the side. Yeah, he's done a, done a good job though. You know. He does, but yeah. I think he needs to come back because I noticed when I was flying the drone, there's some white bits on the port side. <laughs> Still white so, bits? Yeah, there is around the window uh. and the very front way. We've changed some planks to some bare woods. So that all needs treating and sealing before mm. the winter. So that's your job, Robbo, next time you come back. <laughs> right, thank you all so much for watching. See you next week. See you later, guys. All the work that we do on Surinder is all made possible with the support of our amazing Patreon supporters and Coffee Monthly members. Without their support, this project wouldn't be possible. So thank all of these people on the screen, as without them, these videos wouldn't be possible. And if you wanna join our Patreon or monthly members on Coffee and get early access to our videos and help support the project, we would be so grateful. Until next time, see you next week.